Yeah, I got the vegan steak with the collards. <laughs> no, I got the vegan dish with the collards, with the sweet potato fries, and the vegan uh, mashed potatoes, and some cornbread. The vegan got steak, <laughs> but it's vegan steak. Got um, green meats and some cornbread. And the other vegan got a hamburger. <laughs> no, it's a real hamburger with some mashed taters. And Quinn got. Um, there we go. He got some collards. He got some uh, macaroni and cheese. And of course, some really good looking fried chicken. With. Welcome back for another exciting episode. Today, we're gonna to go to the Southeastern Railway Museum, which is right around uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I guess just outside of it. So come on with me and see what we can see. there you can go on inside and outside. It's small but mighty. Although just one kid makes it a little echoey in here. <laughs> but other than that, everything is great. And the price is right too. back here. They even have a throne. 
<laughs> okay, bad joke. Hey, it's a long way down. The milk tank car. So this is where all the cows slept? I don't know. Let's find out. You had a tank of milk there. And you had a tank of milk there. That makes sense now. And here's another type of caboose. Let's see what type this is. If I can make it up that. <laughs> Do anything for you guys. I love you guys. Not sure if you're worth a broken leg, but I'll try. Ooh, this is. Seems like a lot roomier. But just because it doesn't have as much stuff in it. Ooh, these are a bit lower. I guess you don't have to climb quite so high. I don't like that. Hmm. Here's a sink. I just realized, even looking back, there's no throne room. Ha! I guess you have to have a thunder bucket for here and toss it outside. <laughs> okay. Of course, it is a caboose. You could probably just toss it over the back. Let the next train worry about it. <laughs> now, this is known as a seaboard bunk car. Let's see what it looks like inside. Let's try to check out the other side. Okay, here's the other half of the seaboard bunk car kind of what it sounds like for the workers on the railway this would be their bunk their home away from home as it were here's a couple little speeders also known as motor cars that would be put on the track to kind of test the track or have supervisors go down the track or just move from one place to another short distances there are actually clubs now today that do speeders and do multiple day adventures on abandoned railroad tracks. If you're interested in something like that, look into it. I'm sure you'll find some in your area. And don't forget to read the signs here because they have some really interesting stories. This was done here in Georgia, but the information was found in Hershey, Pennsylvania, at least part of it. So that just goes to show it takes a lot to get information and restore 100% vehicles like this. I believe this is pronounced Velocipede. But in either case, it kind of looks like a motorcycle, <laughs> like a three-wheel motorcycle for the rails. Uh, what happens is that centerpiece right there, you'd pump back and forth. That would make the wheels go. And these would be used for like you know, line inspectors, um, occasionally for, you know, gang, you know, work gangs, but not too much. This could only carry up to three people at the most. And what I like about this, it doesn't just have trains, although I do love trains. It also has some fantastic vintage vehicles. Of course, this video does not do justice. But this just shows you some of the stuff that's here. Incredible. Usher shows you the tools and the equipment needed to maintain the rails and more vintage vehicles. And exactly what each of them did, what the significance was for each of these vehicles. And you can kind of guess how they were related to the rail industry by bringing goods and services 
to the train and people, of course. And they have a mock mail room and information center, and you can even pretend like you're sending Morse code <laughs> by this little thing here. Freight office. Little mini mock area of the machine shop. And they even have these really, really cool murals like all over the place. Now, way in the back, in the far left corner of the building, you'll find date nails. Now, this is something I knew absolutely nothing about, and this is why I love these little, small museums. You always seem to learn something new. Now, date nails were something that had two numbers on it. Those two numbers represented the last two digits of a date, like 24 would be 1924, for instance. And what they did is they would be put into wood for date purposes. Now, for example, um, if someone wanted to know, you know when something was put in, all they have to do is look at the nail head and they can see, oh, that was done you know, 10, 20 years ago. So it might be time for them to inspect it, that kind of thing. Date nails, who'd have thought? Old CTC units. And an old switch remote control unit. For you to peruse. Also in the back of the building, there's this special events area. There's all kinds of neat stuff in it. They actually run different special events, uh, at least once a month. But they have all kinds of neat stuff in here anyway. So walk on through. They have a little model train area. Looks like there might be a place for some, probably a model train club. It looks like they're still building over there. Very nice. A lot of their supplies. Some more museum pieces. Some things you wouldn't think about. And other things that you do. Like these signal lights. So I just do a quick walk around. So when you get here, you can peruse on your own get a little more in-depth. Double time. And now it's time to explore outside. Mm. Now anything here with yellow steps or that is open, you are more than welcome to go into. There are lots of things outside to explore. I'm not gonna bore you with each and everything. We are gonna go into uh, a couple places. Like there is another building here. that has a beautiful steam engine in it. 